Today's video is about Android. Right now, the Galaxy Z Fold 7 I have is running the official Android 16. And I also installed Android 16 beta on the latest Google Pixel phone. According to Android, they will be officially releasing it for Google Pixel devices soon, followed by Samsung and other devices shortly after. I installed the beta version on the Pixel, and if you have a Pixel as your primary device, you shouldn't install it just yet because it still has bugs. It's only meant for testers. But after installing it, you can see that Android 16 is indeed installed. You're probably aware that Android is one of the most popular operating systems in the world, used on more than 3 billion devices. So after some time, Google announced that they were changing its look and feel. They call this new design for Android 16 Material 3 Expressive. You might not notice the changes right away, but those who are heavily into this stuff will. The new design changes the colors, allows for multiple fonts, and uses realistic animations that feel like they're interacting with a real-world environment. They say they paid attention to every small detail to make the user experience more fluid, responsive, and personalized. About four years ago, I made a video speculating on what it would be like if features like these came to the always-on display for Android smartphones, which were just beginning to be explored at the time. When you're playing song on your phone, if the ambient screen is playing like this, we don't actually need to turn on the main screen or wake up the phone. So imagine if we could answer a call without waking up the phone, and as we said before, you wouldn't need to turn on the screen for that either. With the phone screen on, the Google Maps app drains the battery quickly. So I think it would be a big advantage for us if an app like Google Maps, which is used often, could be supported on the always-on screen. Google has now mentioned that they're giving us the opportunity to use these features. When you request an Uber, you don't need to keep the notifications on. They say they're giving you the feature to show it directly on your lock screen like this. So, the things we were hoping for four years ago are now starting to be delivered by Google. After installing this on a Google Pixel phone, let's take a look at some of its features. The first thing is, if you go into the settings, you'll see Android 16 like this. I locked the screen because we can start with the cool stuff on the lock screen. When you long press it, there's an option called Customize Lock Screen. When you select that, you can see this is what comes up. They've given the option to customize the wallpaper. You can see that if we go into the live effects and select a photo we like, the AI scans and beautifully cuts and manipulates the photo for us. We can also change the color to our liking. But that's not the most special thing. You can see that when we go into the weather section, our wallpaper changes according to the weather. There's a fog effect, and if it's raining, you can see a beautiful rain effect. Here's the snow effect. They've also given us the ability to increase or decrease the intensity. And if it's a sunny day, we can see it with a flare effect. Next up is cinematic. You can see that it's preparing to turn on the 3D motion. The AI scans the image and creates it for us. If I apply this now, you'll see that's how the lock screen and wallpaper will look. Also, look at how much life they've tried to give to the animations we talked about earlier. Instead of just moving up and down, they're trying to give us a feeling that things are happening like they would in the real world. You can also see that we can give it accent colors that we want. And we can also modify the contrast and icons. Did you see that? 
the icons automatically adjust to the theme and wallpaper color. Next is the layout. You can use a larger layout if an older person or a child is using the phone. And if you want to see a bigger area, they have given that option as well. You can see they've added several new widgets. The next important thing is, when we pull down the notifications, you'll notice that they aren't just shapes and letters on a screen. You can see it gives us the feeling that they're peeling off. As you pull down the notifications, you can feel that they're attached on the sides, and they feel like they're peeling off. They've also tried to give us this feeling through the haptic vibration, and you can really feel it. So they've tried to make our phone not just a digital screen with animations, but something that we can actually feel in our brain and our hands. The other thing I noticed is, say we're using a few apps like this. When we take the app up like this, you can see the peeling off effect and a little bounce on the sides when it lands. You can also see that they have added features here for split screen, taking screenshots and selecting things. So after this, we might have the chance to use a split screen on every phone. It's already available, but they've improved it a little more. Do you see this? Another thing is that we often put the settings we use most often here as shortcuts. You'll notice that these are not all the same shape. This one is more rounded. And this one is more square. When you press them, they become square, and when you press them again, they become round. I noticed that this doesn't just happen here. It also appears different screens such as password input screen and number pad like this. This square and round shape change. So it's clear that they are trying to do something different from the traditional way it's been. When I try to change the shortcut settings, you can see we can put the shortcuts we want on top. The other thing I noticed is that we can select one we like and increase its length. And you can also shorten it again. You can see how they move beautifully and arrange themselves correctly. We can also change these things and they will automatically rearrange themselves. So you can even customize whether you want them with or without text. When you look at the settings as well, you can see that they are colorful. They have used different colors to make it easier for us to understand things quickly. Even when AI tools like ChatGPT and Gemini give us an answer, they try to help us understand with icons and colors like this. So we can understand that Android is also trying to give us the emotions that colors have. Not only that, let's say we go into something like this. When you turn this on, a small check mark appears. When you turn it off, a cross appears. This is a small animation, a small thing, but we can really feel what's happening to it at the moment. They are trying to change these things even at this level, replacing the traditional toggles we used to have. Another example is that when you tap the search bar like this, instead of just going to Google search, they have improved the default search bar to a level where you can even search for things and apps within the app. And when I tap the volume, you can see that it's designed with more life, more boldly, and with more detail than the previous volume bar. You can see that it's also advanced to a level where we can change the volume like this. Sometimes, some Chinese phones have even done what Google has officially done. You might have had a chance to know about and see this. According to Google, this will officially come to the Google Pixel phone series first by the end of this year. This is one of the biggest Android updates ever. And this year, we've totally changed the way we do product development to bring you Android 16 even sooner. So watch out for updates coming to your Pixel devices starting next month with Samsung and many others this summer. But if you can't wait, join our beta program for early access.
I'm holding the Google 9 Pro XL phone. This means that when the next Google Pixel phone officially gets this OS, the other Google Pixel phones will also get the official update. After that, it will be available for other phones as well. However, sometimes you might feel that Android 16 has been given to Samsung's Fold 7 phone even before the Pixel. The other special thing is that no matter what Google officially designs for Android, Samsung modifies it to their liking. Oppo modifies it according to their own preferences and needs. Otter modifies it to their liking. So we have a small problem. No matter what design language or feel Google brings to its Android design, the other companies, the other smartphone companies, customize it to their liking, except for the main features. So if you want to get the feel that Google provides, you'll often have to get it with a Google Pixel phone. However, this isn't just for phones. As you know, Wear OS runs on smartwatches. They have added a lot of features to this as well, especially when it comes to AI. Although people started talking about AI with ChatGPT, Google has already dominated this. People have started using Google's Gemini more. We can use Gemini on every Android phone, and with Android 16, you will have the opportunity to experience a lot of other things when you install Gemini on a Pixel phone and other phones. So, we're moving forward to AI era. It will be important for getting things done. I won't talk about that here, because there's so much to discuss that we'll need to make a separate video for it. People only understand the things related to its appearance. They only pay a lot of attention to those things. That's why I focused on that the most in this video as well. In addition to smartwatches and smartphones, we expect that they will be able to give us the opportunity to communicate and work with new things on Google TV and Android XR, their VR headset. Also, Android has released a lot of features regarding their security, data security, how to get more work done with the device in hand, and how to use them safely. So we hope to introduce those things when the official OS comes out. Especially, do you remember a feature called Find My Device? They're in the process of transforming it into a Find Hub. So they have tried to use this single feature to find things like your phone, earbuds, and even bags. They also know that people like to see where their family members and friends are live. So it seems that through this feature, they are also providing a feature to share live locations with your friends, family, and loved ones with permission. What phone are you using right now? And what Android OS version do you have? I'd like to know the version. You can use the comment section below for that. And if you have any other input to give on this, please put it in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to CyberHQ. If you haven't already, go to YouTube and search for CyberHQ to subscribe and click the notification bell. You can also follow CyberHQ on Instagram and TikTok. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll be back soon with more new videos like this. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and anyone who loves to learn about new tech.